As far as all-terrain, all-weather, all-rounders are concerned, there's no company that blends luxury and capability quite like Land Rover. And this Range Rover Sport, which gets a new diesel engine for 2016, is arguably Land Rover's best example of its ability to blend luxury, functionality, and off-road prowess into one stylish package. How does it look? The flat hood and downward sloping roof are traditional Range Rover design traits, though the slim headlamps and small tail lamps kind of remind me of the more style conscious Evoque. I find the Range Rover Sport to be very attractive, but maybe not in this tannish brown color that masks a lot of the SUV's handsome lines. Those 20 inch wheels that come standard on diesel models look an inch too small to my eyes as well. How's the storage? The Range Rover Sport has an automatic lift gate that takes this long to open. There are deep suede line pockets in the doors, but because of this car's front cooler system, the center console offers limited storage for anything more than a phone or two. Sorry purse, there's only room for LaCroix in here. Is it roomy? I'm no six foot five Seth Mirzma, so I rarely have issues squeezing my five foot seven inch frame into most cars. In the Range Rover Sport, headroom and shoulder room feel on par for the class, and the big windshield and optional panoramic sunroof help make the cabin feel like a spacious, airy place to sit. In back, there's room for two full-size adults, though a third smaller person could squeeze in if absolutely necessary. How does the interior feel? Well, that's a nice solid thud. Honestly, for 71 grand, the Range Rover diesel should feel nice inside, and it does. Nothing feels like overly special or premium, but steering wheel is wrapped in nice leather, all the controls feel good to the hand, and everything's logically organized. Is it well equipped? Totally. The Range Rover Sport has everything you really want with a few goodies thrown in, but it doesn't all come standard. Optional extras on this car include heated seats in the steering wheel, an 825 watt Meridian premium audio system, adaptive cruise control, a heated windshield, head-up display, adaptive xenon headlights, and a myriad of safety features like blind spot monitoring, lane departure warning, park assist, and a 360 degree camera. How's the infotainment system? Land Rover's in-control touch system is a step up from the company's previous offerings, but it's not a huge leap forward. The display is easy to read, but response is often laggy, and some of the controls aren't all that logically laid out. Take the climate control, for example. Temperature and fan speed are controlled through dials on the center console, but direction of airflow and dual zone sync are controlled through a separate menu on the touch screen. Is it a good daily driver? Uh, absolutely. It's quiet, it's comfortable, and the diesel engine is a total champ. Plus, it's a Range Rover, so if you need to ford a river on your way to the mall, you're fine. Is it fun to drive? I've got to say, for this being a big, you know, luxury SUV, Land Rover's done a pretty good job of making it relatively engaging behind the wheel. The steering's pretty light, and it's direct, and the suspension is pretty comfortable without being, like, floaty or vague. Uh, the engine's got 443 pound-feet of torque as well, so there's always plenty of power for passing, but it's still pretty efficient. How's the fuel economy? This is where the diesel engine really shines. Go easy on the throttle and you'll easily see 30 miles per gallon on the highway, even if the EPA only rates it at 29. That's a 7 mile per gallon improvement over the gasoline V6, and considering this is a 5,000 pound four-wheel drive SUV, 30-ish miles per gallon is really good. How much is it? The diesel engine is a $2,000 premium over the standard supercharged V6, and it's available on the $66,950 SE model or the $71,950 HSE trim I'm testing. The options add up quick though. With the front climate control and visibility package, driver assistance package, extra duty package, tow package, premium audio, panoramic sunroof, adaptive cruise, and more, this test car comes in at $84,260, which is on par with other fully loaded premium SUVs. What are the negatives? 
Honestly, there aren't a lot. If I'm nitpicking, the infotainment system could definitely use an update, and Jaguar Land Rover isn't really known for the greatest build quality, so a couple of squeaks or rattles might crop up. Who should buy it? Look, if big luxury SUVs are your thing, you could certainly do a lot worse than the Range Rover Sport. The new diesel engine is a total sweetheart. It's comfortable, it's luxurious, and it'll climb a mountain if you really need it to. Tech geeks will probably prefer something like an Audi Q7, but for the rest of us, the Range Rover Sport pretty much checks all the right boxes. If you like this Why Buy video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or read us over at Motor1.com.